Money Master the Game by Tony Robbins. So the first idea that you want to take from this book is that you don't just want to work for money. You want to have your money work for you. So you want to get out of the idea of solely exchanging your time for money. That's an idea that, yeah, let's just kind of do away with. Rather, build what Tony calls a money machine. All that is, is an investment portfolio that makes you this while you do that. And I have to say, this is an idea that I love. I love the idea of being able to leverage myself, you know, uh, to earn money while I'm doing other things besides working, whether it's reading or working out or traveling or, sorry, look, I'm getting carried away. But the point is you want to focus on building an investment portfolio. But before we do that, you kind of have to take a step back and you need to um, have investment goals and a plan. So for example, how would you feel if let's say your rent, your transport, your food, food, <laughs> your utilities, your basic insurance costs, they were all paid for or rather covered by your investment income. So you never had to worry about them again. I mean, for most of us, that would be pretty awesome. So this is an example of an investment goal that you can set and then you just create a plan and work towards achieving it. Now, another noteworthy idea is that you want to save a consistent portion of your income every month. This is one of those things that it's like, yeah, we've heard that before and it, it sounds simple and I think Tony refers to it as, you know, a should. It's one of those things we should do. It's like, yeah, we should, I mean, I sh I'm going to save. I know I should and I'm going to do it and I should work out. Yeah, I've been meaning to. I just, uh, I'm going to start next week and I should eat healthily. Uh, I know. And I should read. And before you know it, you should all over yourself. So this is one of those things that, yeah, it might sound simple, but just do it. Just do it consistently because the results can be quite dramatic and beneficial if you do. Something that's related to this, so an idea pretty much related to this, is that you do not want to wait to start saving. Now why? Well, the earlier you begin, so the earlier you start saving, the longer your money gets to compound. And the compound interest, there's the quote that we've all heard before that Einstein allegedly said, although I've also heard that he didn't say it, but it's super important. Even whether, regardless of whether Einstein said it, said it or not, um, people like Charlie Munger, highly successful financially, has espoused at great length on um, its benefits. Another idea is that you want to invest in low-cost index funds. So let's say over the long term, the market does something like this, you know, maybe 5 to 6% a year, maybe 7% consistent, not consistently, but on average over the, the long term. Well, that's the um, unfortunate truth. Most active funds don't beat the market. I remember in my, I think it was my second year um, investments class in university when I heard this, it was in the first week and I thought like, wow. Okay, my lecturer is a liar. Uh, there's just, there's no ways that active funds don't beat the market. Like, why would they exist if they, okay, this guy's lying, man. Turns out he was just right. Um, I was wrong. There's a lot of documentation and literature on this. Plus, when you add in fees, it just, yeah, the picture starts to look quite sad, unfortunately. Another thing you want to take away from this book is that if you want to earn more, you need to add more value. So Tony uses the example of Kim Ki-hoon. He's a man in South Korea, and he's an educator. He's a school teacher. And he's found a way to just add more value to more people. So how did he do it? Well, he started selling um, videos of himself lecturing and teaching English at $4 an hour. And he made $4 million dollars by doing this in addition to other things but the point is that he just added more value 
And then finally, you want to reward yourself and enjoy life now. So you don't want to wait until you're 70 <laughs> to start enjoying yourself financially. But at the same time, you, you want to have, you know, a plan and, and goals that you're trying to read financially. So you might have this, you know, for instance, we, we may have this gold in our heads of financial freedom. But at the moment, you know, we're over here. So there's going to be a path to get there, you know. And cheese, as cheesy as it sounds, you need to find a way to enjoy the journey. You need to find a balance between going towards this goal, but also enjoying yourself now in a, in a I don't want to say responsible, but in a balanced way. And if you do that, then, you know, you can master the game of money.